So a lot of people lately have been asking, hey Captain Iceblock, how do I play Storm in the late game? And I'd be like, well it depends on a lot of factors, like the draft, itemization and such. I can't just make a video about it and have it fit all scenarios. Well today, I'm going to just make a video about it. Although, what I said in my previous sentences remains true. You really can't put together a late game Storm guide and have it make sense for each match. So what I'm going to do instead is break down this particular match just to give you a sense how to operate Storm under these particular scenarios. Some of what I said will carry over to many other matches, some might not, but the overall team should remain the same. So let's go. First, we're going to have a quick montage of us getting to the late game, just so you can get familiar with both teams drafts, and definitely not because I like montages of team fights. And if that's not too relevant to you, feel free to skip forward a couple of minutes. Let's go. Let the fun begin. So, for this fight, since I still only have Yules and I'm only halfway to finishing BKB, right now my biggest threats are the Nature's Prophet and Shadow Friends Ultimate. This means I cannot fully commit at any time, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resort to just jumping in and out of base, abusing the region, trying to get some right clicks and a remnant dropped on the lower HP targets, in hopes that that would scare them off. Nice 
That does kind of work. The lower HP targets do retreat in fear of being killed. And once they are properly scattered and going back, that's where I can fully commit and engage. Storm was coming. And this lets me purchase BKB, which fundamentally changes how I can approach fights. I'm just gonna let Anti Mage push, stay in the back lines, wait for them to engage, and counter initiate. With BKB, I wasn't afraid of Prophet's Orchid, or Zeus' spells, or any other disable. I can fully commit. As long as most of them are dead, and they cannot stack disables on top of me, I can stay in the battlefield playing on the front lines. If this was a more 5 vs 5 scenario, or their bigger damage dealers like Shadow Friend and the Spectre were alive, I would play more carefully. Like right now, as soon as the buyback is done, me and the anti-mage has to retreat because of the cooldowns of our survivability. With this quite successful Rax push, we can now feel more confident playing around the map, so I'll be taking the more dangerous farm, because with the pushed in lanes, we have pretty good vision of where everyone is, and they would have to commit a lot of heroes to catch me. So as long as I see at least some of them showing on the minimap, I can safely push whenever and wherever. And again, BKB lets me initiate on whoever. If the kill is not successful, if there is no threat, I'm just gonna head back immediately. As soon as my mana is done for, I'm getting it back to base, getting a refill, and then showing up back to the fight mere seconds later. And with the blood turn done, I'm gonna keep looking at the solo enemy heroes. And if they're going in a path that is fairly isolated away from their teammates, I might try to jump some of them. Here, just me and anti mage can take down a lot of heroes solo, so I'm gonna teleport next to him just in case they overcommit and engage. But as uses ultimate reveals my location, so I know the enemies will fall back, so I get out of there as well. As long as the area is not properly warded, it's kind of dangerous. The waves are pushed, I have no vision, I cannot play in that part of the map for long. Here, I'm just gonna wait out Shadow Friend's ultimate and re-engage later, saving my BKB charge. Even with the BKB, they can still do a lot of damage to me, so I gotta be careful and only commit just long enough to take down a key target, then retreat. And with the vision back, I can once again play a bit more aggressively. Stay back, observe the fight. For now, there is no need for me to engage. Spectre is not a good target for me to jump to. I'm not gonna deal much damage to her. But as soon as the supports show, I can jump.
even if we get a clean team fight, their lineup is extremely good at deep pushing, so this might still take a while. The game plan remains the same, keep all the lanes pushed. If I see some solo target or some other good engagement opportunity, I will jump. I will use my BKB to safely kill my target without being disabled and then get out. Those heroes, their lineup, even just a few of them can shred me in a few seconds. So there is no point for sticking around too long, unless my team is behind me. And now, with a hex and a princess knife, I alone can stack a lot of disables, allowing me to kill everyone except Spectre. This means I'll be looking to play even more aggressively, initiating whenever I see someone, either killing them myself or disabling them for enough time for my team to initiate with me. And with both teams having massive kill potential on one another, this match can still swing in either favor. Even with the Megas, the vision here is less than ideal, we only have control of one of a half lanes, so even with my massive kill potential, I can barely see any enemies showing. But as soon as the waves are naturally pushed back, and we have re-established vision, we can again champ literally anyone, maybe except Spectre, and grab a nice clean pickoff. Naturally, their team fight is still insane, so the pickoffs might not be enough. So I'm gonna play it safe. After my target dies, I'm gonna head back, reevaluate, then re-engage as needed, just like the last time. With all the lens pushed and Shadow Friend still being dead, we gain full control of the enemy's base. And if anyone steps a bit too far, we can engage. I'm gonna save my items as much as possible if that is not needed. The Prophet here overcommits, but he poses me no threat. So I'm gonna save all of my items, just in case someone else comes with him, so that I can initiate on whoever joins the fight. The enemy sees that and is reluctant to engage. Since they have committed most of their initiation to kill me, I can safely buy back, rejoin the fight, and we can close out the game. Yeah. 
So yeah, each match is gonna be a bit different, so it's hard to categorize late game storm into one single episode. It's gonna mostly depend on the, your items, enemies' items, enemy spells, and your spells, and how both teams synergize with one another. For this match, I was mostly playing an initiator, hitting and running, picking off key targets with my disables. Some other matches I could be playing a brawler, just being in the middle of the fights most of the time, and some other matches I could be counter initiator for someone like Enigma or a faceless void. But yeah, the best advice I can give for late game initiations is to always read the map. Keep a mental image of what everyone is, what kind of cooldown saves disables everyone has, and always try to reevaluate the current situation of the engagement. I know a lot of this sounds like very abstract, and it is, so in the end, the best advice I can give for late game storm is to just go to late game and practice. And this concludes today's topic. Thank you for watching, good luck. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower is under attack.